Now, trigonometric proofs often give students a lot of trouble getting started because they just don't know what they're supposed to do, right? I've talked about the different sort of tools that you can use in a proof. Uh, there's a list of eight or more things you could do, and it's not always clear what you should choose or where you should start or when you're even done, right? So what we're going to be doing in these problems is a very, very hand-holding walk through the proof uh, style of homework problem. And maybe the one you're looking at is not exactly the same as this problem right here. But the strategy for doing these problems should be approximately the same for all of them. And uh, it should get you feeling a little more comfortable with how proofs work. So what I want you to get used to right now is the idea of reading directions. Okay, you really do need to read these directions. There's a little bit more, there's a little bit of advice at the beginning. Okay, you'll start to recognize this. Um, it just says, you start with one side of the identity, never both sides, and whichever side looks nasty, you start with that one, okay? And in this example, if I'm looking at these two sides, I'm comparing sine plus cosine squared, okay, that's not too bad, but I'm comparing it against this side over here, cosine times tangent plus sine cotangent, that looks pretty ugly. So I'm going to start on the right side of this thing and try to simplify that. And read what it says here. It says, rewrite the right side by distributing the cosine multiplication through the parentheses. Do not cancel anything out yet. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Okay, ignore that. So we got, what do we get here? We get cosine x times tangent x. Okay, that's the first distribution. And then if you look at the next one, I've got cosine x times sine x times cotangent x. Now, you're probably thinking, well, I could have changed that cotangent to cosine over sine. That's true. You could have. But just follow the directions step by step. See, the next step says, rewrite the right side of the identity in terms of sine and cosine only. Don't cancel anything out yet. Just rewrite it as cosines and sines. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, I have cosine x times sine over cosine. Okay, you can see what this is lining us up for, some canceling outs. And then I have cosine x times sine x times cosine over sine. There's going to be some more canceling going on with that one. But we don't cancel out yet. Okay, just leave it like that. And now in this last step, we say uh, look for common factors on top and bottom and cross these out to simplify. Okay, and then I think we should be done, right? So I'll use blue here so we can see what's going on. I cancel out those cosines, and I get sine of x. And on the right side, I cancel out those sines. So there's just cosine times cosine, okay? Which we can, we can just say that as cosine squared, okay? Cosine squared of x. I crossed out the common factors, and then I simplified the expression. And look what we got, this exact thing right here. Okay, so that's an example of how you would walk through a proof, making each step in that process very, very clear to the reader so they know what's happening.